Hi everyone, today I'm going to take you through topic two, which is social variation. All right, so as we've already talked about, social parameters to do with age, gender, sexual orientation, socioeconomic class, education, and occupational status of speakers will typically correlate with, meaning um, they will align with and will be reflected in the way sounds, vocabulary, grammar, and discourse patterns vary. People who share the same socioeconomic status and linguistic repertoire also share a social, social dialect, and we call this a sociolect. Okay, so linguistic repertoire means the set of words or the set of phrases, um, the typical grammatical structures that you use and so on. So people who share the same socioeconomic status um, also share a social dialect, which we call a sociolect. Okay, so you might have heard of William Lobov. Um, we have talked about him briefly last year when we did language acquisition. So he is a linguist and he was the first one to show us that the relationship between society and linguistic variation could be studied in a systematic way. That is to say that there are patterns um, and that they can be studied um, in like a scientific way. He identified a list of sociolinguistic variables in New York English, such as the pronunciation of R in words like beer and pork, the pronunciation of ing in words like cooking and eating, and the pronunciation of th in words like 30 and this. Interestingly, Lebov found that people changed their accent slightly depending on their context. When people felt a situation was more formal, they would produce the words in ways that they perceived to be more correct. Okay, here, um, this is the end of the slides and you need to finish off by doing this task in Living Lingo, the blue book. You need to do task four, which is on page 150. When you're finished with that, you can go on to the next set of, uh, set of slides.